Have you ever had a Malamar? You know those cookies that have like a marshmallow and it's coated in chocolate? Today I'm gonna to show you my version of that cookie. Just in time for fall, a really fun thing. Great for bake sales, great for just eating. In this bowl I'm combining a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour with a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of whole wheat flour. The whole wheat flour is not necessarily there to make it more healthy, but it adds a really nice nutty flavor to the dough for the cookies. A quarter teaspoon of coarse salt, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, same thing for baking soda, quarter teaspoon, and cinnamon, ground cinnamon, quarter teaspoon. Whisk it till everything is well combined, and then in a mixer or even by hand, really, you can combine four tablespoons of unsalted butter, room temp, and a quarter cup of light brown sugar. Beat till they're light and fluffy. It's not gonna take much because it's not very much butter. It's a pretty low butter cookie. If you wanted to, you could do this by hand. It's quite easy to cream by hand. It takes a little bit of elbow grease, but if your butter is really room temperature, it's not a problem. I feel like I've told this story before, but when I was young, I used to do all of my baking by hand, but I never really understood about room temperature butter, and so I would really struggle, and the butter would slip around the bowl. It was ridiculous, so make sure it's room temp. One egg, that goes in with your butter. Feet to combine. Now you can add your dry ingredients. And then beat. This recipe makes about 12. If you're really skimpy with the dough, you can probably get about 18, but I like them to be a little bit more generous, so you'll get about 12. And if you want more, you can double the batter. It's really a small recipe, as you can see. You can do the final mixing off the mixer if you need to. A little stir. Cookie sheets here, these are lined with parchment, and my oven is preheated to 350 degrees and then roll it into a little ball. And you want to leave about three inches between each cookie on the cookie sheet. Once you've got them all rolled, you want to flatten them out a little bit. So take a little bit of flour and the bottom of a measuring cup and just flatten your cookies out. The first one might stick just a little bit, but once you get going, it'll be okay. Then get these into your oven, make sure it's preheated, and bake them until they're puffed and dry about seven minutes. After the cookies have baked for seven minutes, it's time to add the marshmallows. Now the original recipe says a half a marshmallow, but I'm going crazy and I'm using a whole marshmallow. Just put it right in the center of each cookie and then back into the oven. The marshmallow will stick to the cookie and melt just a little bit, about two minutes. So now the marshmallows are really soft. You wanna flatten them a little bit and get them to stick to the cookie. So just Flatten them a bit with a spatula, and they'll cover pretty much the whole top of the cookie. So these cookies are like a Malamar, but they're also like a s'more, right? All right, these need to cool just a little bit before you dip them in chocolate. I think I've let them cool enough. Now it's time to dip them in chocolate. Take one cookie at a time and dip it in melted chocolate. This is nine ounces of chocolate, and you wanna get the whole entire thing submerged in the chocolate using a fork is what you usually use to dip chocolates, but whatever you feel like works. And then just lift the whole thing out. And you wanna top off with all of the excess chocolate that's on the bottom. And then you can transfer the chocolate dipped cookies to a wire rack to set. And then you can transfer them again to another parchment lined baking sheet. It's a little bit easier if you use a smaller bowl so that the chocolate is kind of deep and the cookie can be submerged. This chocolate's not tempered, so it's gonna to need to go into the refrigerator to set and you can keep it in there until you're ready to eat it. I generally don't like to use chocolate chips for dipping things because they, they will melt, but because they have stabilizers in them, they don't melt that well. So they're not great for coating things like, well, cookies like this or truffles or anything like that. I recommend buying a good quality chocolate. I like semi-sweet, so like a 61%. If your chocolate starts to set a little bit or a little bit too much, you can always pop this back in the microwave. That's how I melt my chocolate these days. I find it so much easier than a double boiler, don't you? And there you go. I wanna transfer mine to a baking sheet because I don't want it to stick to my cooling rack. So you can just lift them off once they've dripped 
and then put them right onto a parchment lined baking sheet. I suppose you could just let them set right here on the parchment, go directly from the chocolate to the parchment, but then you get like a little foot of chocolate on there, which I guess isn't so professional, but saves on cleanup. Into the refrigerator. They should set in 10 minutes, which is not very much time, but you can keep them in the fridge until you're ready to eat them. Aren't they cute? I think they're so cute. I have to eat one before I put them on the plate. I mean, I have to know if they're good, right? Mm. Oh yeah, they're good. You guys are gonna love this special treat.